Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I am Pradyu. Uh, I am a second year student uh, pursuing undergrad in engineering physics at uh, Bennett University, India. So I am also an author of the book uh, Journey Through the Dark Monster, which is a primer on general relativity and black holes. Uh, so today I will be presenting you our research on performance analysis of thermoelectric generator using lead telluride, perovskites, scutellotides, and tetrahedrite classes of materials. So in this presentation, we will be exploring these contents. Let's begin with the introduction. In the introduction, we will see what is thermoelectricity, what is Seebeck effect. We will see the problems which uh, such papers are trying to solve. And we will see the research work which have been done by us. So, you know, the demand for energy is increasing day by day with increasing population. Also, burning fossil fuels is not a good option as it degrades the environment. Thus, an alternative and renewable sources need to be found out to satisfy the growing demands without harming the environment. One such alternative is thermoelectricity, which converts thermal energy directly into electricity without using any moving parts. The research on thermoelectricity is going on since many decades, and due to the development of nanotechnology, a lot of progress has been made in this field. On an average, the efficiency of thermoelectric generator is 5 to 8 percent, and lead telluride, uh, bismuth telluride, calcium manganese oxides are some common materials which are being used in making thermoelectric devices. So in the year 1821, uh, German physicist Thomas Johann Seebeck observed when a compass needle is placed in a closed loop formed by two different metals, along with temperature difference between their metallic joints, the compass needle deflects. This result, which was initially observed in 1794 by Italian scientist Alessandro Volta and independently rediscovered in 1821 by Thomas Johann Seebeck, was deemed as Seebeck effect. The Seebeck effect, which is a subcategory of thermoelectric effect, states that the Seebeck effect is a phenomenon in which the temperature difference between two dissimilar electrical <coughs> conductors or semiconductors produces voltage difference between the two substances. The positive numerical value of Seebeck coefficient implies to a p-type thermoelectric lead or thermoelectric material, whereas Negative numerical value of Seebeck coefficient implies to an n type thermoelectric material or thermoelectric lead. When we combine p type thermoelectric lead and n type thermoelectric lead together, we get a thermoelectric cup. So, what problem are such research papers trying to solve? Uh, almost 64 to 66 percent of the energy is lost in a system in the form of heat. This energy could be utilized to generate electricity with help of thermoelectric generator. Uh, in automobile, this means a reduction of carbon emissions up to 1.5 tons and saving 400 liters to 800 liters of fuel annually due to increase in fuel efficiency. We could use thermoelectric generators in hybrid vehicles by storing electricity generated from the waste heat from the engine and the exhaust pipe into a storing unit like a battery and then using this stored electricity to ride the vehicle. There is no need of recharging the battery. Uh, we could also use thermoelectric generators in thermal power plants to increase the plant's efficiency by 10%. A thermoelectric uh, couple uh, weighs less than a battery and occupies 120th space of a solar cell. Thermoelectric generators are portable, has no moving parts, requires no maintenance and has a longer lifespan. So, today there is need to find a perfect combination of thermoelectric materials and thermoelectric couples to achieve maximum efficiency in an economically viable manner. Our research claims that with the right combination of thermoelectric materials, thermoelectric couples up to 80% efficiency could be achieved. We have simulated our data in console multiphysics to analyze performance of various thermoelectric materials and thermoelectric couples which could be further used in making thermoelectric generators. So, let's see the classes of materials studied in our research paper. The first one is lead telluride. Lead telluride and its alloys are well known for high thermoelectric performance and has played an important role in deep space exploration. 
but those kinds are class of materials that have a similar structure to calcium titanium oxide. They also display mirror of exciting properties like superconductivity, magneto resistance and many more. Scutellodytes are another well known class of materials. Scutellodytes are cobalt arsenide based mineral containing variable amounts of iron and nickel substituting for cobalt uh, with the general formula COAS3. Tetrahedroid, uh, sorry, the scutellodytes uh, are also studied as a low cost thermoelectric material and they also have low thermal conductivity which are essential to increase the performance uh, of the thermoelectric module. Tetrahedroid is a natural mineral which shares a similar structure to that of Cu12, Sb4, S13. It has a high symmetric crystal structure and has a large unit cell. Uh, uh, this has intrinsically low thermal conductivity and is cost efficient and environmental friendly. These are the five thermoelectric materials which we have studied. The first one is, comes under the class of uh, light telluride. The second one is perovskite class of material. The third is uh, scutellite class of material and last two are tetrahedrite class of materials. These five thermoelectric materials were combined with each other to form eight thermoelectric couples whose properties could be seen in this table. Among these eight thermoelectric couples, four thermoelectric couples showed efficiency more than 10%. And these are, the first one is the uh, light telluride class of materials combined with the uh, uh, perovskite class of material. Second one is again the light telluride class of material with scutellite class of materials. The third one is uh, both P and N type of light telluride class of materials. And the fourth one are te uh, tetrahedroid class of material and scutellite class of materials. So, as I said earlier, uh, we have simulated our data in console multiphysics and uh, we have studied the temperature distribution along the surface, heat loss and thermoelectric voltage output to find the best thermoelectric couples which could be further used in making thermoelectric generator. So, coming to results and discussion, this diagram represents the temperature distribution on the thermoelectric module surface. Uh, these two uh, these two are the thermoelectric legs. Uh, the top part and the bottom part are the con uh, conductive metal plate. The uh, copper has been used as the conductive metal plate. And the topmost and bottommost part are the ceramic. And the material used as a ceramic is aluminum. The dimensions <coughs> of the thermoelectric leg are 10 mm by 5 mm by 5 mm. And the uh, temperature over the temperature difference is of 500 Kelvin. Uh, here it's 800 Kelvin, and at the bottom uh, it's set as 300 Kelvin. This is the thermoelectric voltage output for uh, 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 light telluride class of material and perovskite class of materials, and the voltage output is around 0 0.26 volt. This is the uh, uh, total power dissipation density, uh, heat loss with respect to temperature and the curves here displays the uh, materials uh, like uh, uh, the ceramic, uh, P-type thermoelectric light, N-type thermoelectric light and copper. So that's what these uh, uh, different curves are here. And uh, the main heat loss is at the uh, junction between the metal and semiconductors. That's where the main uh, heat has been dissipated, uh, is dissipated. This is the uh, thermoelectric voltage output for P and N type uh, light telluride class of materials and the voltage output over here is 0 0.28 volt. This is the uh, heat loss for light telluride class of materials where light telluride class of uh, light telluride materials are p-type as well as n-type. This is the thermoelectric voltage output for uh, light telluride class of materials uh, combined with uh, 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 scutellite class of materials and uh, the thermoelectric voltage output is around 0 0.24 volt. This is the uh, heat loss for light telluride class of materials combined with scutellite class of materials. 
This is the thermoelectric voltage output for uh, tetrahedral class of materials and uh, scutellar class of materials. And uh, the thermoelectric voltage output uh, was found to be 0 0.2 volt. This is the uh, heat loss for uh, tetrahedral class of materials combined with uh, scutellar class of materials. So, uh, from this we have concluded that the four materials which I showed you in the table, those four thermoelectric couples showed maximum efficiency uh, more than 10% and uh, they could be further used in making thermoelectric generators. And the nomen here, this is, these are the nomenclatures used in our research papers. Uh, these are the formula used and the key ingredient over here is to increase the figure of merit which would eventually increase the efficiency of the system and to increase the figure of merit we have to increase the uh, electrical conductive properties and we have to decrease the uh, thermal conductivity of the material to get uh, maximum uh, to get high figure of merit and eventually to achieve maximum performance out of it. These are the references. Thank you. Questions? Uh -huh. um, when you were talking about applications, talking about using car engines, okay. um, I think you're going to have to update your applications okay. because uh, internal combustion engines are on their way out. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, uh, what I am presently looking is that uh, we could uh, use this system in electric vehicles most probably, uh, provided we find a solution to the heat source, because that's the key ingredient. Uh, uh, one heat source might be uh, the battery itself, uh, they eventually get heat up, so we can, we might use that as a heat source. Uh -huh. um, yes. Uh, one thing you might want to look at is um, PV panels. Okay. They get hot. Yes. <laughs> no, see, uh, actually this is a very early stage of our research. So, uh -huh. uh, the application-based designs would be eventually made in the next paper. Uh -huh. uh, so, this is just a rough estimate about how much efficiency each and every material is giving so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.